So we're here this evening for proper plant establishment and deep watering with our instructor, landscape designer, Shilke Tao. Um, for those of you who are familiar with BOSCA, the Bay Area Water Supply and Conservation Agency, you know they've done wonderful programs and rebates and all kinds of items focusing on water conservation. So hopefully everybody's here to have some exciting learning tonight. Uh, for today's class, everyone's muted right now. Uh, the, our instructor will pause sometimes for questions. If you do have questions, go ahead and either raise your hand or put a question in the Q&A or in the chat. And I will pick those up. And uh, when there's a convenient pause, insert them into the discussion. And if you miss anything, this is being recorded and it will be made available. So um, you can review all the slides and everything once the recording is set out to the public. So a little history on BOSCA. Uh, they represent 26 agencies uh, in the San Francisco regional system that purchase water wholesale. Um, the agencies are made up of cities, water districts, a water company, and a university. Uh, they provide water to over 1.8 million people and 40,000 businesses and organizations in Alameda, Santa Clara, and San Mateo counties. And part of the, the education program objective is that you know, Bosco wants overall to be sure that its service communities have a future in water as we've witnessed with the last few years of drought and then the insane rains we had last winter, things fluctuate greatly here. And so Bosco kind of coordinates between all of its 26 agencies to make sure that everybody has an equitable share of water uh, to serve its communities. And as many of you know, I'm sure, um, outdoor water use in our area is the single largest untapped opportunity for water conservation. We see irrigation running year round and that's our drinking water going into the ground. So we're really focusing on how to rein that in and make some changes. So tonight we're gonna learn how to do that um, through both the use of water efficient plants and innovative garden techniques that will be shared with us shortly. And some of Bosca's programs that they're doing as incentives, I'm sure you're familiar with Lawn Be Gone, which is a uh, lawn replacement program rebate. Uh, it's similar to the one that Valley Water offers that we'll talk about shortly. Uh, also there are rain barrel rebates available that would have come in handy last winter. You can also upgrade your current irrig irrigation system to a smart controller or carve out a part of your garden for a rain garden and receive a rebate for that. So definitely programs worth looking into available at bayareaconservation.org. And as I mentioned, Valley Water has a similar lawn program. It's their landscape conversion rebate. They offer between one and $2 uh, per square foot to take out your lawn and convert to water-wise plants. And if you're in Santa Clara, the city of Santa Clara uh, provides great incentive. We were one of the first to increase cost sharing to match Valley Water to offer $4 per square foot for the first thousand square feet up to a total of $5,000 for Santa Clara city residents. So if you're thinking about converting your lawn and haven't done it yet, please take advantage of the rebate because the funds are there. And I'll put my name and email address in the chat later on. If you're a Santa Clara resident, please reach out to me. Or even if you're not, I have some great photo glossaries to help with plant selection for the rebate process. If you're doing it on your own, it makes a big difference to see pictures instead of looking at that 2,600 plant list. So I'm happy to supply that to you. And also, just as a side note, if you're not aware, tomorrow, October 19th, is Imagine a Day Without Water, which is a nationwide day of action that just brings attention to the need for constant infrastructure repair and improvement for water conveyance in California and across the country. Uh, nearly a million Californians don't have access to clean, safe water every day. So we're lucky in our valley that we have two great uh, organizations that are helping to make sure that happens for us. So tomorrow, take a minute when you turn on your tap and just think about who's providing your water and what it takes to get to your faucet. Another great resource if you're looking into any kind of garden um, renovation, whether you're doing a rebate or not, is South Bay Green Gardens. They've got great instructional videos. There are a number of design layouts, um, all kinds of tips and Good, good help there that you can kind of use for doing it yourself. 
So if you do have questions about any of Valley Water's programs, you can contact them at conservation at valleywater.org. They also have a really nice newsletter that you can sign up for on their website that gives timely tips throughout the year. So check that out if you're in their service area. And Bosca is offering a number of classes after this one in the landscape education series this fall. Um, they actually go through the end of November. So if you're looking for certain uh, subjects that you are needing to brush up on, check out their list on uh, bayareaconservation.org. They've got a lot of great classes coming up that aren't listed here as well. And this last slide is dedicated to bayareagardening.org. Um, this one is a little bit newer to me, but one of the really neat things about it, you can go into different gardens that have been designed in our area and see still shots with individual plants highlighted and get information about those individual plants. And it's kind of a virtual tour around the garden. You can walk from front yard down the side yard around to the back and see what the designer has done and what plants they've used and get some details as to those plants specific needs. So that's kind of cool again, if you're just into plants or if you're looking into doing a renovation yourself. So with that, I will stop sharing as soon as I get back to my appropriate screen. Uh, pause, so let's resume. Pardon me. I don't wanna end the meeting. <laughs> There we are, sorry. <laughs> Little technical hiccup there, <laughs> they changed the button. Okay, so I'll go ahead and mute myself and turn it over to our special guest instructor for tonight's program, Ms. Shelki Tao. Thank you, Vitaria. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, tonight's talk. Um, my name's uh, Shelki Tao. Um, I'm a landscape designer and owner and founder of um, the business uh, Water Efficient Gardens. I uh, actually also come from a high-tech background, uh, like many of you um, in the Valley. And I started doing landscape design and uh, get involved in uh, this uh, business, um, started this business um, about seven or eight years ago. So I'm very happy to talk to you to the, uh, tonight uh, about planting and deep watering. Uh, let me go ahead and share my uh, screen. Okay, tonight we are going to talk about um, proper uh, plant establishment and deep watering. Um, we are going to talk about um, uh, uh, why we should, um, why uh, fall planting is uh, such a good idea. Um, how after the planting, how we can um, do the proper establishment, um, deep watering, um, and then uh, doing the Q&A. Um, fall actually is one of the best seasons to do planting, um, uh, especially here in California. Um, this is one of the projects um, I, we just finished. So um, it's a new uh, landscape, a uh, new garden uh, for a, a native, um, native garden. So um, why is fall um, one of the best seasons? Um, first, um, it has got uh, great temperatures. So um, as you can see, this is the temperatures for Santa Clara. Um, October, um, the fall time that we are in right now, um, it's like um, not too cold um, and then not too hot. Um, both too cold and too hot, um, that's not very um, ideal for uh, a young plant to establish. Too hot, right? Um, it's uh, just really tough. Too cold. Um, they um, for the young seedlings. Um, it's uh, also very very hot. Now October sits right uh, between that two extremes. So um, it's um, temperature wise, uh, it's a very ideal um, uh, range. Another very important reason is that um, it's right before the rainy season. 
So um, if you look at this uh, precipitation chart for um, uh, Santa Clara, you can see that um, our rain season will come right after October, uh, November, and going into December, January, and February. That's when we will have uh, the most of the rainforce uh, throughout the year. And that's extremely important um, for the plants to establish themselves. So when we are talking about um, establish the plants, yes, um, what we do, right? Um, the care we provide um, is very important, but almost equally important or even more important is to try to leverage um, the nature as much as possible um, so that um, we can take full advantage um, of um, the rains and um, all these um, natural con uh, conditions as, uh, as much as possible. Um, here I'm going to give um, two examples of uh, four gardens. So um, this is a garden we um, uh, planted um, exactly today, uh, October 18th, uh, four, days, uh, four years ago, um, 2019. So um, as you can see um, that it's a native garden. Uh, we um, designed a rain garden right here and a dry riverbed so that um, it can, all the rainwater will flow into the rain garden and then um, this dry riverbed here. Uh, most of the plants are native plants. Well, just six weeks later, um, it, it was just uh, right after a rain uh, in December. Um, you can see that um, all the plants are doing very well. And just in six weeks, they already um, grew a little bit. Well, that's after about three months uh, come spring, then all the puppies are really blooming. And just after four months, that's how the garden looks um, in July. So um, you can see that um, the rain in winter season really help uh, establish the garden. Um, nothing, we just put in the plants, uh, put in the drip irrigation and did not do anything else um, in this um, uh, during this time. But then with the winter rain, um, the plants you can see um, really establish themselves well and and the garden uh, fielding like um, really nicely um, in less than one years of time. So um, this is one of the four garden, one example. Another example is the Northwest YMCA community garden um, in, uh, in Cupertino. So um, it's this big long just um, behind the main building. So um, YMCA wanted to um, convert uh, this long into a community garden. Um, and I designed it um, as a charity project. So um, we also um, finished the design and did the planting in late September. So um, I um, ordered all the plants and then placed them in the, um, in the garden. And then um, a volunteer team uh, just came together and planted all the plants um, on the weekend of uh, September 24th. So that's uh, late September. Uh, that's after the planting. And then just six weeks later, um, you can see that uh, the plants already um, were um, growing a little bit. So um, you can see these um, uh, epilobiums, the fuchsias, um, they were just like this, but then six weeks later, they were already blooming. And then right after this, we got a lot of rain um, and we actually turned off the irrigation um, around this time. So um, this garden, we only water it for about six weeks uh, from late September to early November. And we turned off um, the watering. Um, all, um, until May. So no irrigation from November to, um, to May this year, but then the garden really did very well. So um, this was how it looked uh, in June. 
And as you can see, the plants really uh, fill out really nicely. Um, oh. <laughs> and this is um, just um, the same month, um, late June. And you can see these um, are like ripe, they just were going to uh, burst uh, into full bloom, both the, um, uh, the epilobium and the um, uh, buckwheat. So this is um, like uh, July and August. Um, so you can see that um, the, the fuchsia has um, grown to like three feet tall and um, along with all, um, these other plants um, here. So um, the garden you see here is also a, a full garden and it really did well. And yeah, pretty much um, become a very nice mature garden in less than a year. So when we talk about um, how to establish um, plants properly, um, I think first and foremost, um, the most important thing is uh, try to use um, native plants as much as possible. So native plants, they are adapted to our um, local climate and they can take full advantage of the um, uh, weather cycle, um, the uh, winter rains um, that we just talked about. Um, plants from other places, they are not from this area, they have, they are adapted to other patterns, but native plants, um, they, they, they are the experts in utilizing all the rain wa water in um, winter rain water and can really uh, grow well um, uh, uh, come spring and next year. So as you can see, um, this is the uh, precipitation uh, pattern um, for um, Santa Clara. So the native plants, um, after millions of, or tens of thousands of years, um, they are very accustomed to this cycle. So when the winter rain comes, they will absorb all the water and just uh, goes into the um, kind of like a, a growth craze um, period and really uh, absorb all that water and grow rapidly and bloom. Um, you can see this um, uh, flower flowering current here. Um, they uh, bloom in December when the rain um, starts to come. And then uh, manzanitas and then the poppies will also bloom uh, from January to uh, April. So, um, and then after the rains um, uh, stopped and the weather dried up, then they will either go into dormancy or um, just um, stop bloom as much so that they can conserve all the water um, to wait till the next uh, rainy season. So um, the native plants, they already have all this pattern building so they can um, really establish them well um, if we do them, uh, plant them in the fall time. Um, as you can see, this is a picture I took uh, in the super bloom this year. So we had a lot of rain this year. And along with that, um, we really had this super bloom. Um, what happened was just that um, we do have all these um, like seeds sitting there. But um, if in normal years, when we did not have that much rain, then they ju just did not do like, um, went around their business as normal. But then when you have super rain, right, then they went into the super bloom. That's how um, the nature's magic works um, or is that if you give it rain, give it water, then the plants will really grow and bloom. Um, that's another photo of the super bloom. So um, we can say that um, nature has its magic. Uh, the plants have their own magic. Uh, all we need to do is to um, plant at the right time, um, give it the, um, the watering, and then let it um, absorb as much rainwater as possible. And then just like nature, we can also have a very beautiful garden. So um, after we um, 
select and put native plants in our garden. The next um, is that um, we need to set up proper uh, drip irrigation. So um, the drip, um, as its name indicates, is that um, it drips water out. Um, usually it's like one plant, you need to have one drip. Um, it can be um, through the emitter or through the um, uh, uh, soaker line where you have holes on the line. Um, to do that, um, you can program your controller. Um, we recommend smart controllers um, like this one, the Beehive, um, or uh, from Orbit, or um, like Ratio. Um, those have like um, the local weather built in, so it can. Um, that's why it's called um, smart controller, so it can adjust uh, the watering volume uh, based on the weather. Or um, you can um, download the app and then control it from your phone. Um, so um, right now, uh, Valley Water is providing a rebate for the smart controllers. So if you um, currently don't have a smart controller, um, you can actually apply for, for one and then um, you'll get fully in, uh, reimbursed for that. So um, the about the watering schedule, like how um, how frequently should you water the plants after they are planted? Um, so the general rule is this, um, the first two weeks, um, you need to water it every day. Um, when you first planted the plants, um, they the roots def are not functioning yet. Um, or they can, um, they are still, uh, they can only take the water in that uh, potting soil. Um, their plants have not extended outside of the pet potting soil. So you just need to give it water every day to um, make sure it can uh, it leaves. So um, first two weeks every day, um, or even up to like three to four weeks, depending on the plant. Um, one thing to look is that whether um, there's any new growth, uh, new buds, new leaves, um, that's the indication that they have adapted to the uh, new environment and has started growing. Um, when you see that, then you know they have um, established themselves um, in that in that uh, spot. And then you might uh, you can reduce the frequency from every day to maybe two to three times a week. Um, you can continue to do that for for the first one to three months. And then after that, then we can start to do um, less frequent watering, maybe once or even um, once every two, once a week or even once every two weeks. Um, but then every time when you do that, um, you want to water, water deeply. So um, this is the um, Northwest uh, YMC garden. So after we um, uh, planted all the plants, we water it every day um, and then make sure um, they, all the plants get enough water. So what does it mean for deep watering? So if you look at this chart, um, native plants tend to have very deep roots. That's how they um, get the water from all the um, as much as possible. So they um, the strong roots will get re really deep into the soil to get that water. Um, deep watering means that um, the soil is saturated to about eight inch of depth or about um, this level. Um, so that's um, yeah, that's how deep um, the water needs to um, to go to. Um, and one thing to note is that um, even, even the um, irrigation method is drip, um, you can still run off. So um, there is a concept called um, fuel uh, capacity. That's how much the soil can absorb, how much water the soil can absorb um, before it runs off. Um, for the clay soil, for example, um, it can only take like a one inch of uh, rain or irrigation 
then it will just uh, run um, run off because it it reached the threshold of the fuel capacity and cannot absorb any more. So um, even if it's drip, uh, drip irrigation, we also we still need to uh, pay attention to um, the fuel capacity and don't overwater it. Um, so depending on the soil of your garden, um, you can um, just um, make sure that uh, it's less than that threshold. Um, there are three main soil types, um, sand, loam, and clay, uh, and sandy loam and clay, clay loam uh, in between. One way to find out is do this um, uh, hand uh, test. So you um, take a little bit of the soil, as a little bit water, and then try to make a ribbon uh, out of it. So if you, um, you can hardly make a ribbon or it's less than, let's say, um, 10 millimeters long, then um, most likely it's a sand soil. Um, if you can make a ribbon pretty long, like, like five to seven um, uh, centimeters or um, 50 or to 70 uh, millimeters, then likely it's clay. Um, anything in between is the loam soil. So um, it's important to know um, what kind of type, uh, what type of soil um, you have. Um, so that has a big indication for how long you should uh, water. So, um, so after the first uh, one to three months, right? Um, when we say we want to water deeply, then when should we water? Um, one way to find out is that, um, see how dry the soil is. Um, the soil moisture meter um, is the most accurate way. So if you, um, I know valley water many times gives out this for free. So um, if you can, um, like in the next event, um, if you can get one, um, I, I will encourage that. So um, if you use a soil uh, meter and uh, put um, in the soil for up to four inches um, and read the, uh, take a look at the reading. If it's um, like in the red zone, it means it's too dry. And, um, and then that's the time for you to uh, give the deep watering. Um, you can also program it um, for, on your smart con uh, controller. So um, as you can see, um, this is the program, the interface for um, the, um, the Beehive controller that I just showed. Um, you can program it like monthly, bi-weekly, or weekly. So um, that's something um, that you can just program it and then um, don't need to remember it. Um, Um, one thing to call out is that we need to do deep watering for trees. Um, it's really important. Um, when we had it along, because uh, it has the uh, sprinkler water, so um, it's not as important. But then when we change that to um, a native uh, garden or drought tolerant garden, um, because the tree doesn't get that um, long water anymore, that means we need to specifically give uh, deep watering to the trees. So um, how much water um, you should give to the trees? So the one rule of the thumb is that um, for every inch of the diameter, you give one uh, 10 gallons of water. So for such a tree, if the if the diameter, let's say it's about 18 inches, then for that one watering, um, you are aiming to give it 180 gallons. Um, personally, I felt this is a little bit overkill. <laughs> I think 180 for such a tree, yes, it's a big tree, but it's maybe a little bit too much. I would say it's... I would say maybe half of that should be should be pretty much enough, like ninety gallons. Also, again, you can um, uh, watch, uh, adjust, and try a couple times and see how it goes, and then adjust. Um, I think you can by just 
observing it, um, you might find the optimal uh, volume pretty soon. Um, the right way to do a uh, watering for trees is to use the soaker lines like this. Um, and the it has holes um, on the pipe. So um, if you just uh, drip the water out from this um, uh, from the pipe when you do the watering. Um, for a tree, uh, you might want to do several uh, circles, like um, three to four for the big trees, even more, so that um, the all the surface, um, the roots uh, can get the water that if they need. Um, so if you have um, veggies and other plants, then what can you do, right? They do um, need more frequent watering. Um, so in that case, you can do the hydro zone. So um, a hydro zone is like um, you group the plants with similar uh, water needs um, into one zone. Um, if you look at this um, photo here, so there is one veggie bed, and then um, the others is the Jiao Taoran garden. So um, in this um, garden, then you have two zones. One zone just for the veggies, and zone two is for these other uh, Jiao Taoran and native plants. Um, so one hydro zone is um, controlled by one valve and is controlled by one program. So if your um, controller has six um, stations, that means it can um, uh, be programmed for six hydro zones. Um, so that's something you should also um, you can also take into consideration when you try to uh, buy a um, smart controller. So say um, before you decide how many zones, um, how many stations to buy. So for example, um, it, usually it has six stations, um, eight stations, all the way to twelve or even twenty four stations. Say if you have a front and backyard uh, garden, and then in the front, you might have like these two different zones. Um, and then you might have uh, like the trees on the side. Um, it needs its own uh, uh, program. So maybe three zones in the backyard, um, maybe you have also have three zones or four zones. So um, in that case, you might want to buy a um, smart controller that has um, seven or eight stations. Um, if you have uh, more zones, then you might want to get one that has uh, 12 stations. Um, so everything is built in in the controllers. So you just uh, need to find the, um, the zone uh, corresponding to the um, the on the uh, interface, um, the, the button or um, interface um, that corresponds to the um, the respective um, respective zone, and then can um, adjust it from there. Um, we just talk about the weather pattern. We definitely want to take full advantage of the rain. So um, after the plants are put in, right, um, and then you water it um, every day, as we mentioned, uh, until it uh, kind of like uh, established, then um, like what we did for this garden, um, just around uh, early November, we, we turn, when right after the first um, and second rains, we turn off the, um, uh, the irrigation so that um, all the, plants need um, was just rain, uh, rain water. So this is, um, we turned it off in early November and then did not turn back on until May next year. But as you can see, the plants did really well um, without any supplemental irrigation water. Um, another example is this um, uh, oak, uh, valley oak tree. Um, from the very beginning, we know we wanted to have a, um, a tree in the garden. So we planted this uh, valley oak. 
Um, after it was planted, um, actually all the leaves pretty much went brown. Uh, we really were sus um, were like uh, concerned whether it survived. So um, this is me cutting off a bran branch and try to see whether um, there's still greening in it. Um, there was. So we were uh, hopeful at that time that um, it is it, it's still alive. But then after all the rains, um, it really come uh, like fully back to life. Um, right now it's doing very well and full of the green leaves. Um, so that's one example that um, after the first uh, establishment, um, just let just let it take all the rainwater and the plants actually can do very well. Um, another plant um, is the um, Another example is the native milkweeds, um, the uh, showy milkweed and then the narrow leaf milkweed. So um, we had a, a dedicated section in the garden uh, for pollinator garden, um, mainly these two uh, native milkweeds. The, they are the only host plants for the monarch butterflies. Um, in the West Coast, the monarch butterflies population has declined by something like 99% um, in the last 20 years. Um, and these two different kinds of native milkweeds are the most important um, host plants for them. So if we want to um, help these monarch butterflies and uh, really stem the loss and, uh, and prevent them from going extinct, then we just need to plant more such native uh, milkweeds. So um, we plant, as you can see, we planted about um, 20 uh, plants um, in this section. And then um, after that, um, and the water was turned off like uh, in early November. And after that, um, we did not see anything. It's like completely nothing. <laughs> I was so concerned. I was really already thinking about uh, putting in replacement plants. But then it's, it's like this, <laughs> like nothing um, for like a full six months um, from November to, to May. Um, but then late May, then we started to see the these little buds came up, and then then it turned out they they were they were not dead. They were very much alive. So another month, they all came into like um, full life. So these like one by one came out, and later these ones came out as well. So this is how it looks um, in uh, in June. Um, so from this example, I think um, we can say that um, the nature really has um, a lot of magic, um, but you just need to be patient um, for it. Um, there is a saying for native plants, um, first, first year sleep, um, second year creep, and third year uh, leap. <laughs> so before um, you can see a leap, you need to really wait um, two to three years for it to really um, just establish themselves. But well, just be patient, um, do the deep watering, and then if you if you get there. Um, um, I think I I had one slide for um, the benefits of deep watering. Um, I might um, accidentally deleted it. So deep watering has a lot of benefits. Um, it's um, Most importantly, it can um, help save water. So if we just water shallow, then that um, a lot of that will uh, evaporate. That means we need to water more frequently. But then if we uh, water deep, then it will um, go down to the soil so that um, the evaporation will be much less. Um, another huge benefit is that um, the plants that have deep roots um, can be much more stable. Um, and can get the nutrients better. Another benefit is that um, it can help us uh, 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 combat climate change because with the deep roots, um, then they can um, uh, loosen up the soil and then in that will improve the structure of the soil. With that, um, the soil can absorb more carbon than um, otherwise. 
So with that, um, actually more carbon can be captured and stored in soil and reduce the carbon in the air. Um, so again, um, deep watering is just um, not only good for the plants, but also good for our uh, environment. Um, so to summarize, um, now is one of the best times to plant um, the four season. Um, when we do that, um, uh, we should try to use more native plants, um, do the deep watering, um, know your soil. Um, if your soil is a clay, then uh, make sure you don't water it too long so that um, there is overwatering. Um, make sure you water the trees. Um, take full advantage of the winter rain. Um, and then you can do it. <laughs> um, nature has the magic. Uh, all you need to do is to help it. Um, so um, here's my contact information. Um, you're more than welcome to um, contact me for any questions about the plants, uh, watering, um, or native garden. OK, um, so. Um, uh, that's the talk. Um, uh, anyone have any questions? I'm happy to answer. I haven't seen any questions show up in the chat or the Q&A. Oh, one just came into the Q&A. Let's see. Oh, we have Wendy saying thank you. <laughs> so does any one of you um, planning to have a garden? Start one now. <laughs> any questions? Any Well, I did want to kind of piggyback on what you said. It, it is a fantastic time to plant. I just put in uh, four Arctostaphylos shrubs in my garden um, just earlier this week. And I thought, you know, it's a little bit touchy because we're going to have this big heat today and tomorrow. But overall, the, between the warm soil and the cooler air temperatures, I mean, it's just ideal, especially for those California natives. Mm -hmm. Do you have any recommended sites that you uh, advise people to see for buying California native plants? Yeah, I think the YMCA community garden <laughs> that I just uh, showed, um, it's, a, it's a good site to take a look. Um, there are um, like 30 to 40 different kinds of native plants. Um, I put signs on them uh, next to them. So um, you can see the names of the plants um, and how, how they are like. Um, so that's a good place to, to see. Um, I also have a couple of gardens, uh, native gardens. So um, welcome to um, uh, contact me and I'm happy to send the address to you and you can go take a look. Excellent. And we just had another question yes. come in. Uh, last year was unusually wet. Is it okay to start a garden during a drought? Yes, <laughs> that's why, um, that's what the irrigation is for. Um, pretty much any time of the year, um, you can, you can uh, put in a garden, even the hottest time. Um, it's, it might not be as um, easy as the other seasons, like right now, but you can definitely do it. Um, I, yeah, the, I have designed many, many gardens and we did it in all the seasons throughout the year. Um, I think the key, again, is to uh, make sure you have the proper irrigation set up. Um, really importantly, um, use native plants and then water it every day um, after it's planted. Um, and then, yeah, do the deep watering. And we have another question. Also, what about using fertilizer? I know for most of my native plants, I usually do seaweed emulsion at the end of summer and end of winter, and I don't do much more than that. What do you recommend? Um, so the fertilizer really is not needed um, for most of the native plants. Um, for when you do the planting, um, different people have different ways of doing it. Um, so, uh, Usually, to put in the um, some compost um, can help. 
um, some people they say um, like for plants like manzanita, um, they say compost or even some liquid um, fertilizer can help them. So um, I think when you do the planting, the fertilizer or compost, um, it's um, it, it, it can be helpful. But then after it's planted, um, especially in the first one to two two years, I don't think you need any fertilizer. Um, for all the native gardens I have designed, um, I don't think um, I I have never the homeowner never use any um, fertilizer. Um, so I think that's why, again, that's why native plants are recommended because they, once they establish themselves, um, they really don't need any fertilizer um, to, to grow. And we had someone ask, what about a palm tree? So I'm asking for clarification. I'm not sure if the person needs fertilizer or watering. <laughs> so let's see if we get a response. But in terms of native plants, what is a good place for people to find native plants if they want to include them in their garden? Um, so I think um, you can go to the native garden, uh, native nurseries. Um, there are a couple of them, like Summer Wing, um, the Yamagami, um, they have a native plant section. Um, another good way I would say is to uh, work with designers who, um, who have the expertise. So um, I know quite a few um, nurseries um, and the native plants they um, they, they, they provide. So um, I, like if um, you work with me, then I will, um, I can um, um, pretty much um, source all the native plants, um, design with native plants and source them uh, well. So I would say um, if you just want to buy some, ju then just go to those native nurseries but um, if you um, really want a like a nicely designed native garden, um, a good way maybe to um, work with a, a native designer. And that is a good idea because natives are a little bit different. They they require less attention in a lot of ways, but they like to be handled a certain way. So it's good to have somebody who knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple more questions. Uh, one of the participants said, I have gorilla hair as my mulch. It's been about a year and a half and seems to have faded to gray. How often do I need to replace it or do I? Um, so far, I, I, I'm I, yet to have one garden that needs to replace their um, mulch. Um, and I started doing this six or seven years ago. So I will say um, the, the mulch actually really can last pretty long. Um, the gorilla ones, um, I don't know too well because I only have one or two gardens that use that mulch, um, use that. Um, I would say just uh, observe it, right? If they pretty much stay in the place, um, still look pretty good, then yeah, you don't need to replace it. Um, yeah, I, I, I really felt from my experience, um, it, it can go a couple of years before you think about like adding it or replacing it. And a lot of times it just needs replacing because if you have a gardener who likes to use the blower, they end up blowing it away. But if yes. it's just left to itself mm -hmm. to break down and you have wood chips, it can take a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom has gorilla hair, so I've been used to it a little more regularly the past few years since she got it. And it does break down more quickly. Um, and it is lighter weight. And sometimes the animals take some because they like to make a nest with it. So you find it disappearing a little bit more than some of the other mulches also. Uh, we do have a follow up for the palm tree question. Uh, the person is asking if a palm tree would do well in our gardens here because of the climate. Yeah, palm trees, they are tropical plants. They do need a lot of water. So um, if you like it right and want to keep it then i would suggest um really do the soaker line um get like uh, at least four or five circles around it and make sure um when you do the deep watering make sure you give it enough water um the, the, i think the example i just showed in the presentation um like uh, one diameter needs 10 gallons of water so you might try to you that use that formula and come to a approximate amount of water. Um, it, 
hundreds of gallons. Uh, it's, it might sound a lot, but then maybe that's what the palm tree needs. So give it a try first uh, and see how it goes and then adjust based on um, how, it, uh, how it does after that. And we have another question. Do you recommend adding vermicompost to help break up clay soil during this time of year from worms? I have not done that. Um, from my experience, um, most of the plants actually do okay with the clay soil here. Um, all we did was just adding some uh, compost. Um, and then most of the plants did very well, um, as you can see from the photos here. Um, I, 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 I cannot speak to that because I haven't used that. Uh, all I can say is that um, most of the native plants um, that I have designed, um, they, they do very well with the clay soil. And I haven't done my own vermicomposting, but I have used earthworm castings in the past <laughs> at the recommendation of you know, other people. And they do particularly well for vegetable gardens, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. um, but native plants are so well acclimated to our area. Our soil is nutritious enough for them. Like once they get established, they don't really need much else. Mm -hmm. And we do have an additional question. I've read about Chinese pistache trees. Will these do well here in the Bay Area? I think so. I think there are quite a few around the, um, in the neighborhood. Um, you can see them um, a lot. <laughs> Um, I think so. They, they can do well. Um, it's just that um, it's not a native tree. Um, so if possible, um, we uh, recommend um, going with native trees and plants. Um, so the natives have many benefits. Um, first, they can save more water. Um, as you can see from the that chart I showed, right? Um, let me let me go back. Uh, so um the native trees or plants they they pretty once it's established um they all they need is just the normal uh, rainwater they don't need too much uh, supplemental irrigation but non native plants um they do not come from this area, they might need uh, their pattern, water needs pattern might require them to have water during the sum summertime, which is most of the area um, of the world is. Um, so we are in a um, Mediterranean uh, climate zone in that we have rains in winter and no rain in summer. In other places of the world, um, it's the vice versa. Um, most of the rains come in summer um, and then no very little rain in or less rain in winter. So their plants need a lot of water um, in summer. Um, and if we plant such plants, then that means in, at least during the summertime, we need to give them a lot of uh, irrigation water. So um, na non-natives, um, they need more water than natives, generally speaking. Another huge um, benefit for native plants and trees are um, they support uh, local biodiversity. Um, the bees, birds, and uh, poly uh, pollinators, they have coexisted with the native plants for um, millions of years. Um, if it's a foreign plant, then they, they can't deal with that and they can't um, survive on, uh, with, on these um, non-native plants or trees. So if we want to preserve our biodiversity, preserve the mona butterflies, um, as I just mentioned, um, then it's better to um, have um, native plants in our gardens. We have a question. Last year, my lemons were large and healthy, and this year they're half the size. What is wrong? Yeah. Does it look dry? Um, underwatering may be one possible course. Um, lemons are citrus plants. They do need a lot of water. So I would try to think about that um, and maybe give it more water to start with. Um, and then we have two additional questions. Do you use drainage tubing for water from the gutter to the rocks in the yard? 
how far from the house should the tubing be from the house? So I'm glad you I'm glad you asked about that. Um, because actually, um, the answer is um we actually only connect the pipe um out to the garden and then point to the start of the um rain garden and. And that's it. The whole idea of rain garden is to let all that rain water to flow into um, here. This is the where the rain garden is. And that's where the um, dance bow is. Um, this photo did not show it. Let me see whether there's a better one. Yeah, no. Um, uh, I, yeah, anyway. So yeah, this is, so this is dance bow. All we did was to have the very short pipe um, so that um, the water can go um, kind of like point to the start of the, um, the small dry river bed. And then all that rain water will just flow into this rain garden here. There's actually another rain garden here that takes the water from this dance spout. And then if you just, um, that the dry river bed is all around. So if you just, um, that rain water will just flow into this uh, rain garden as well. Um, so our today our topic is about deep watering. So I did not cover um, rain garden, but I would like to say that um, to fully utilize uh, rain water, the um, rain garden is the one of the best ways. Um, the rain garden needs to be up, uh, ten feet away from the house. So, um, but other than that, um, there is no other limitations. Um, the rainwater, as you can see, the outlet is just right here. And then as far as the water just uh, can flows, flow into this uh, dry riverbed, then um, then that's fine. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, I was muted and I just said the last question we have right now is what are a few native trees that grow fairly quickly? So the um, the Western rabbit, um, it's, um, it's a very showy tree with pink flowers. Um, I won't say it's super fast, but it's relatively fast. Um, so that's a good one, um, a Western rabbit. You might see that a lot. Um, uh, in the neighborhood um, in, in Santa Clara, um, it, in, in spring, it has this very showy like pink flowers all over it. Um, you can't miss it. So it's a really um, beautiful tree and a native tree, extremely drought tolerant. Um, so that's one. Um, if you have the space, the best tree actually is the um, oak tree. <laughs> Um, the like the valley oak that we planted in the um, commu uh, YMCA community garden. Um, oak trees they are extremely uh, valuable for um, the for the insects for the um, uh, food web and biodiversity. Um, they can support up to like two hundred and seventy different kinds of insects. Um, and uh, non-native trees like a uh, eucalyptus, um, it can support like none or less than five. So um, with the oak tree, like it can from those insects, so it, then it can support with um, many, many, many birds. While uh, the eucalyptus tree can like no no birds around them because they just do not feed the um, the, the the insects cannot take that um, use that as the food. So um, I think um, the oak tree actually is a really good um, tree to grow um, in our environment um, if you have a relatively uh, bigger space. And then uh, the person has a follow-up question. How many inches deep are the rocks in your picture? Only um, three to four inches. Yeah, so the rain garden, um, it's about the depth is about one feet, but then you fill that with, um, uh, with compost, with soil, and then putting the plants, and then you cover that um, with the pebbles um, for about, two to three inches or three to, three to four inches.
Okay, and I believe that was the last of our questions in case anybody has any else, now's the time to ask. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, it looks like that summed it up. Um, thank you so much, Shelky. That was a wonderful presentation. I've taken several notes. Again, for those of you uh, who are interested in having some follow-up review, this will be has been recorded and will be um, available on the Bosca website later on. And for any, oh, we have one more question. Oh, and we have somebody saying, thank you for your presentation and the information. Um, I saw in the Q&A, um, is that Wendy? Um, she said uh, she needs design, right? Um, Wendy, are you still uh, around? So um, as um, I, uh, as I introduced um, at the beginning that um, I'm a designer. So um, we do design a lot of um, native gardens. So happy to work with um, anyone who has such a need. Um, yeah, you can feel free to contact me um, by the email address I shared. And looks like we have another. Oh, she said, I'm here. I will contact. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so she'll reach out to you. And again, if anybody's in Santa Clara or, you know, in, in the county and you're going through the rebate process with either Bosco or Valley Water and you're interested in a photo glossary of the plant lists, please check out the chat. I did put my uh, personal email at work at City of Santa Clara in the chat. So I'm happy to send that to you, or you can go to the City of Santa Clara website and we do have those available online as well. But I did wanna say thank you so much, Shelky, for a wonderful presentation. And um, I hope you have a wonderful evening and enjoy the fall with your new plants that hopefully you're getting in the ground about now. Thank you. Thank you, Vitoria. All right, well, good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Good night. Good night.